Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you a nice little baseball physics trick for virtual reality. So here's my bat, some nice little green indicators and a ball, and smack, there it goes. So one thing I want you to see real quick is when I wave the bat around, these little indicators, it's kind of hard to tell, but they're changing color from green to red. And that's based off of how fast I'm swinging the bat. Now, the reason you can't just go with a uh, straight collider on the bat and just have it so that the player just swings the bat with a single collider is that the the velocity at the different points of the bat so imagine let's see let me put it out here again imagine at the end right there the the tip right there that needs to be a lot higher than the velocity at the base of the bat now, to be realistic and you can kind of see that as I swing it around so if it was all the same just one big collider it wouldn't matter where you hit it on the bat or you know how you swung the bat it would only matter how fast the controller was actually moving so this trick lets you get around that really easily without any special code or anything so let's just dive in and see how it's done alright I'm gonna open up a new scene here and I'm just gonna go through the setup process step by step it'll only take a second so here we go new scene save this existing demo and I'm gonna grab a baseball bat from this sports bats bundle it's actually made by a good friend of mine it's up on the asset store there's a free version and then there are a couple um, cheap different bundles so if you want to support his work which I definitely recommend go check it out I'll put a link there and you can grab them now since Frank's living in Canada right now I'm gonna pull out his Canadian bat just pull that right in here there we go with the nice little maple leaf now I need the steam VR camera rig to get started so I'll pull that in right there and then of course we have to delete the main camera I'm going to expand out the rig and I'm just going to put the bat right here. Let me rename this. Call it Bat Canada. We'll put that right underneath the right hand. Make sure that the position and everything is zeroed out. And then for the rotation, we're going to set this to 90. This is just going to make it line up with the controller. Let me show that real quick. So there we go. We just wanted it to line up. If it's at zero, it's going to be wrong, right? We don't want our player holding the bat like that. All right, so we've got the bat in there, got it at 90. I'm gonna move this game view kind of out of the way. And now what we're gonna do is set up some children on this bat. Let's go to the scene view. There we go. I'm gonna right click on the bat and just add a capsule, which is way too big. So I'll shrink it down. We'll go to like 0.1 on all three axes and I'll slide it up right about here. There we go. So I think this is probably the lowest in I want the player to hit the bat with. Now, I'm gonna add a component here, and this is where the, the magic comes in, and this is just the bat capsule script. So I'll pull this in here, and it has a bat capsule follower field. We're gonna need to set that up in just a second. Um, we do wanna turn off the collider, though. This thing doesn't need to have a collider, so let's remove it. Great, and then let's start creating the bat capsule follower. So to do that, I'm just gonna duplicate this capsule, drop it out here, and remove this bat capsule script. And then I'll add the bat capsule follower script. And it's got one field on there for sensitivity. I'll show you how that works in a minute. And we're gonna just turn this into a prefab. So I've already got it right here. I'm gonna delete that one and just do it again. So we'll call this uh, bat follower. And then I'm gonna drop this down into the assets folder and make it into a prefab. Perfect, now I've got the capsule selected and I'm just gonna assign the bat follower just like that and then I want to duplicate this capsule a couple times so I'm gonna hit control D drag it up here and I'll kinda of want to get these lined up so that there's no like edges or dips in there I want to have it relatively flat so I'll duplicate it duplicate again and again and again and the more pieces I have the more accurate this is gonna be but I don't want to go overboard and have you know a dozen or two dozen colliders here think about six or seven is probably a good number. There we go, right up to the end. So this is gonna be where our player will actually be able to hit. And I like to have it a little bit bigger than the actual bat in these games just because it makes it feel better. It's not, of course, super realistic, but it's a video game. We want it to be fun, not real. Okay, so I've got that set up. I've got the capsules, I've got the bat follower. Now, before I dive into the code, let me just hit play and show what's gonna happen. So if I leave it just like this, the capsules with all of these bat capsule scripts on them are gonna spawn a bunch of bat followers. And let me pull these side by side again so we can see it as the game runs. 
And if I grab my bat out here, I see something is definitely wrong. The problem, if we look down here in the error message, was just that there's no rigid body. These bat followers are going to need a rigid body because they have to move. They're going to move and they're going to hit things, they're going to hit balls, right? So let's add a rigid body. And we want this to set be set to not, continu not discrete, but continuous dynamic. Because these things are going to move, they're going to move fast. So if I hit play again, or first let me hit apply, hit play one more time grab my bat, wiggle it around, and you see they're kind of working. Like It looks like they're probably following. It's really hard to tell though, right? Um, what I want to do now is just, oh, I need to delete this other bat follower that's in my scene. But before I go further, what I want to do is change the layer of these bat followers so that they're on their own layer. So I've created a layer here, just named it bat follower, and I assign it to the bat follower prefab, and I'm just going to hit apply. And then go to the physics settings. So we want to go to edit, project settings, physics. And we want to make sure that bat follower doesn't interact with itself. In fact, in this case, I only have it interacting with default because it, it shouldn't interact with the UI or any of this other stuff anyway. But the key point here is that we don't want the bat followers hitting each other and bouncing each other around. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to delete the bat follower that's in my scene, hit play one more time, and then watch these things. Okay, and again, it's a little bit hard to tell if they're there or where they're moving. And that's because we still have the ones, the renderers on the capsules on. So I'm gonna select all the capsules, turn off the mesh renderers, and hit play one more time. Now watch the bat followers appear where those things were. There we go, so they're there. They were always there, it was just kind of hard to see them. I wiggle them around, you can kind of see it. All right, this is me wiggling the bat. Now, I said that they were turning red and green, and there's a reason for that. I have another script on here that I've added. So if I go to bat follower, there's a script that I've created called velocity debugger. I put that on here, and it's got one field on there for max velocity. I'll play one more time, wiggle it around, and then we're gonna dive into the code and see how this all works. So there we go, you can see the edge part is red while the base is you know, more green, because the green part isn't moving as fast. All right, if I flip the bat around a little bit, we may be able to, eh, it's still kind of hard to, to get the bat, the base to move faster. But that's how it should be, right? The base of the bat is only moving a small distance while the end moves really far. So it's moving a lot faster. All right, so let's take a look at the code. Well, first I'm gonna go into the velocity debugger because it's simple. So all we do here is get the renderer and then we set a color based off of the velocity of this individual piece. So remember each one of these bat followers has its own capsule, it has its own renderer. So all we're doing is picking, you know, getting the renderer figuring out the velocity just by calling rigid body velocity dot magnitude and then we use color dot lerp from green to red and then we just divide velocity by a max velocity so 20 is like solid red and then you know zero or lower is green so that's how we show the value there and of course we turn this off when we're actually playing this is more just to debug and see how things are going see how our sensitivity is all set up now let's go back over to the capsules and I want to show the bat capsule script so the bat capsule script has this one field for the prefab and what happens is at start we just spawn the bat capsule follower which just instantiates the prefab sets its position to this thing's position and then tells it to follow this thing as the target so it's gonna the bat capsule follower will target a bat capsule and just follow that so let's go into the follow target follow target just sets the bat follower which is just again the piece that it's gonna follow each one of these bat capsule followers follows a specific point on the bat and then in the fixed update we just figure out the destination for where this thing wants to go so we take the bat followers position and we consider that our destination this piece just wants to move to where the bat follower is or essentially where that capsule is on the bat right and then we set the rotation to match so our rotation of this capsule should always match the piece that it's following we don't want it sideways or crooked that ball would go flying off in some random direction. And then we set the velocity based off of the destination and the position, its current position. So we figure out how far it is and what that vector is. We multiply it by the sensitivity and then we just set the rigid body's velocity to that velocity. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And apparently I actually duplicate that rotation there. So we'll delete that out. That's everything that you need though. And then with that, you can swing the bat if you hit it on the end, it goes further. If you hit it uh, closer in, it goes not nearly as far. And the physics just kind of work. It's almost like magic. So if you have questions about this, again, feel free to drop a comment below or send me a message on unity3d.college. 
Or um, if you'd like to download the code, there's a link in the description below so you can go grab all of this. And I'll even put the sample project up with um, without a bat. So you'll have to grab the bat, but I'll put the code and everything up there so you can grab that. All right, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe.